We see here two interesting things. On the one hand, we see signs, clear signs, that a huge amount of erosion is happening here. A huge amount of soil is being eroded from our slope. All this soil, all this sediment that is accumulated here is loose soil. It's soil that has been detached and eroded recently by runoff. So this is because the size of these bare soil interpatches, the areas between the vegetation patches, are very big and runoff accumulates and detach and transport soil. So that means that we are losing huge amount of soil here. The other interesting thing is how vegetation is trapping this soil here. So this is being accumulated behind the vegetation patch. So vegetation is acting as a sink, is contributing to keep the resources in place. When the capacity of the patches is overcome, and this soil is lost, then the system will enter in a degradation loop. Three years ago, we established this experiment here to investigate how dryland ecosystems respond to environmental pressures, to human pressures. So in this experiment, we mimicked different levels of grazing intensity by removing vegetation. So the, the vegetation cover before the experiment where 60%, about 60% of the soil was covered by vegetation then. So you see here three different plots. On the one on the left, we remove vegetation down to 45%. On the one in the middle, we remove vegetation down to 30%. So this is an incrementing intensity of disturbance here. And on the one on the right, we removed vegetation down to 15%. So this way we mimicked an increasing intensity in grazing pressure, right? What is the result? After three years here, you can see that the plot on the left is stable, let's say. It's more or less the same, in the same condition that we left the plot at the beginning. However, the other two plots are very much degraded and they are very much alike. So somewhere between 45% of vegetation cover and 30% of vegetation cover, the system shifted to a degraded state. So we provoked by putting an increasing pressure on the system, we provoked an abrupt change to a degraded state. In Cascade, we develop mathematical models and we run computer simulations to understand how dry lands function and especially how they're able to cope with pressures such as droughts or grazing. So this is a, a typical simulation of one of our models. What you see here in green are vegetation. So you imagine like a green cell here is a plant and what you see in white is bare soil, so areas without vegetation. This is a piece of land that we imagine is about 100 by 100 meters. Now I can run the simulation through time. And what you see flickering is plants that are recruiting, so new individuals that arrive in the system, and plants that are dying because of age or because they're eaten. What you see here is the total amount of vegetation in the landscape. And here you see the, the line is more or less steady, so that the amount of vegetation in the landscape doesn't change much through time. Now we can suppose that we double grazing. So I double the number of animals in the landscape. What you see is that the vegetation is quickly decreasing. So you have less and less vegetation, and you also see that the patches are fragmenting. So you have less vegetation patches. If we wait uh, long enough, uh, maybe the system will stabilize or maybe we'll lose the whole vegetation so the system will become a desert. So there is no, almost no single green cells left in the landscape. So exploring these models is important uh, for different reasons. The first one is our fundamental understanding of, of drylands, how they function. The second one is that we can use those models to identify early warning signals of desertification. So signals that tell us in advance that a system is about 
to become a desert. The third one is that we can explore um, management strategies. So especially when those models are coupled with socio-economic models, which is um, happening, it's one of the objectives of, of the Cascade project. We can try to explore like different strategies, how many animals per landscape, um, strategies about woodcutting, for example, uh, frequency of fires. The last one is that we can also explore restoration strategies. So once an ecosystem is degraded, uh, we can try to explore what are the conditions that will help the system recover from this degradation state. We can investigate, for example, if we decide to plant um, plants, how many should we plant? Do we need to plant them in one clump? Do we need to plant them randomly in the landscape? So we can to try to explore different ways of, of helping an ecosystem to recover from degradation.